Imagine this, you're watching a horror movie alone. The weather is kind of eerie. Suddenly the lights go out, the room is plunged into darkness. You can barely see anything. And suddenly your phone starts ringing. A loud ring in the middle of the eerie silence. Of course, your heart starts racing. Isn't this what horror movies are made of? The caller ID flashes an unknown number. You take the call, unsure what this is about. And just like that, it is another bank trying to sell you a credit card. What an anticlimax, right? Well, that's what these calls are. An infuriating, relentless anticlimax. They have no place or time. They're always trying to sell you something, a house, a credit card, a loan, or sometimes even trying to find you a life partner. These are what we call spam calls. How do they work? Why do we keep getting them all the time? Is there no way to stop them? And why should you care? Hello and welcome to Between the Lines, I'm Palki Sharma and on this show we'll try to read between the lines, the stated and the unstated, the obvious and the hidden to bring you the full story. Spam. By now we all know what it means. The incessant emails, calls, text messages that you receive every single day. Basically any unwanted invasive communication, something that you definitely did not sign up for. But do you know where the word spam came from? It originated in the year 1937. An American meat company launched a packaged meat product by this name, Spam. It was widely popular during the Second World War. That's because it needed no cooking or heating. You could eat straight out of the tin, so it was easier for the soldiers. But nutritionists frowned upon it. They thought it was junk. So how did this junk food become synonymous with junk calls? Well, the answer to that is a British comedian. He did a spoof on spam in the 1970s. It was used as a repetitive and unwanted thing. And that's how this phenomenon was named. So spam calls are basically unwanted calls. They're made to a large number of people from an unknown source. It could be telemarketing. It could be recorded messages. It could be scams. It could be phishing. You may have heard of apps like Truecaller. They help identify and block callers. In 2021, Truecaller identified 37.8 billion spam calls across the globe. 37.8 billion. To put that number in perspective, the global population right now is a little over 8 billion. Spam calls, 37.8 billion, almost five times the number. And we haven't even taken spam messages into account. In 2021, the world received more than 182 billion spam messages. So it's not just a you and me problem, it's a global problem. And do you know which are the most spammed countries in the world? Brazil tops the list. Every user receives 32.9 calls per month in the country in Brazil. Second is Peru. Each user receives 18.2 calls every month. And where does India stand? We are the fourth most spammed country in the world. And look at India's population, so the number of calls must be exponentially higher. Why are these calls made? Mostly for two reasons, telemarketing and sales. They account for 93.5% of all spam calls. In fact, here's an interesting example from India. Just one spammer made 202 million calls in a year. If you break that down, it's 6,64,000 calls in a day. Needless to say, they were recorded, recorded messages. But look at the volumes. And here's another question. How do so many spammers get your number? because we have virtually no data privacy. You see, a phone number is not just a way to contact you, it's also a part of your identity. It is linked to multiple data sets. And they put you in different categories, like age, location, employment, net worth. You're put in all these lists. And this data comes from everywhere, like the information that you gave your bank, or a site that you shopped from, or a form that you filled on Instagram. And once you give that information, your consent no longer matters. Your data can be sold, and it can be sold to almost anyone. Telemarketing companies can buy it, and so can crime modules. They too can buy it. In fact, anyone with money can access your data, and in some cases, they don't even need money. Some of this data is available for free. 
It's there on online databases. And that's the reason why you keep getting these incessant calls. And let me tell you, you're not alone in this. 64% Indians receive three or more spam calls every day. This is the average. And what are these calls about? 51% of these spam calls are financial services. 21% is real estate. Pathology, pathology services make up for 8%. 3% for phone data plans. 1% beauty services. In the best case scenario, they're annoying. In the worst case, they're dangerous. They can have real life consequences like scam calls. A new report surveyed more than 7,000 people across India, and this is what it found. More than 83% of these people had fallen for AI-generated fake voice calls. That's four in every five people. It's a very large number. 48% of them also lost money. Most of them ended up losing more than 50,000 rupees. So these calls can cost you more than your time and peace of mind. They can also cost you your money. And if phone calls weren't bad enough, spam calls are flooding WhatsApp too. Now, India is WhatsApp's largest user base. 487 million users are on WhatsApp in India, and they're being flooded by calls. Most of these calls are not even being made from India. They're coming from countries in Southeast Asia and Africa. Which brings us to the most important question. How can this be stopped? Until some time back, India did not have any rules for spam calls. But then the TRAI came up with some rules. That's the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, TRAI. These rules came into force in the month of May this year. They require all telecom companies to use AI spam filters. This is for both calls and messages. And these filters are supposed to help identify fake calls and messages. Basically, block spam before it reaches users. But has it helped? Not very much. The numbers haven't fallen drastically. So now the government is mulling new legislation. This is against spam emails and messages. And it could even extend to communication on WhatsApp. It could be part of the new digital bill. The regulator has also considered the idea of introducing a caller ID. It will show you who's calling, so you can tell if it is spam or not. But the idea did not take off for two reasons. One, telecom companies cite privacy concerns. And two, the caller ID doesn't solve the crux of the problem. You will still get that call. The only difference is you'll just be able to tell who's calling. So long story short, government regulation has not had much success. Is there something else that you can do? Well, yes, for starters, you can get a call blocking app. It will identify spam and block it before it reaches you. Two, if you want to permanently block spam calls, you can activate DND &D on your mobile phone. That's do not disturb. In fact, India's telecom regulator has a special service. It's called the National Customer Preference Register. It helps people stop spam calls. You can sign up for this DND &D service to avoid most telemarketing calls, but it will not stop them altogether. Also, stay cautious and vigilant, especially when you face a suspicious call or message. Here are a few things to remember. Do not click on any link. Never share your OTP with anyone. And if you think a call is suspicious, hang up immediately. Let me also tell you something that you may already know. There is no getting away from this yet. You can only try to minimize the pain. Spam calls are like Hydra, sprouting new heads. Block one number and they return with another. They're like the relentless terminator of the telecommunication world, determined to reach you no matter what. So you can try to win the battle, and you have our best wishes, but you're unlikely to succeed. Having said that, if you do, tell us how you did it, and we'll be grateful forever. Waiting to hear from you, but do not spam.